Rita says, greetings from Reno, Nevada. I've learned how to say Nevada properly. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, Rita, welcome. it must be it must be quite late for you there. You're welcome to unmute and and and, and pop your video on if you'd like to. You're going to catch me, uh, let me put it this way, ready for bed. So don't. No problem. <laughs> All right. No problem. That's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. What, Thank you. what time What time do you have in, in, in Nevada this, this today? It's one o'clock. Oh, wow. It's actually okay. one, one, one in the morning. So I saw this and I thought, oh, I'm going to jump on there. I was doing some work. And just before I went to bed, I had a look and then I thought, oh, I'm going to go have a look and see what they're up to. So yeah. <laughs> Here I am. Cool. Yeah, you, you so, didn't. You didn't join the the one we had one last month, which was targeted at the Americas time zones. I, I you missed that. Yes, yeah. but I will. I I was just laughing because I was like, well, I'll just go. On. I I really didn't expect to be talking to you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, the, the the whole the the whole idea of this session is that it's a conversation. It's not like a panel or okay or, or anything. The idea is, you know. That it would Just would it. be a small session, not necessarily this small, but a small <laughs> a small session, maybe a dozen or so people, and we'd have a conversation. It'd be a Q and A, and anyone can jump in at any time. It was never intended to be a presentation or a panel kind of thing. I think what's hard right now is everybody is is not sure what to do. I, I what I what had me up late is I was reading through all the updates, um, the six point two. And, you know, it just, uh, you get to the point where you're just like overwhelmed sometimes. And I think it's just that with, like, it's not necessarily an excuse because I, I, I really, I've started uh, coming on to a lot of the learn wordpress.org, you know, sessions because they've just come so far. They're so good. And, you know, I, I'm going to be kind of biased anyway, but I, I really do like how Jonathan approaches the projects and you know certainly the topics that are necessary and I you know it's just it's frustrating I know when you put that much effort in and then nobody shows up because it's like come on guys it is difficult to to keep up and I agree it is difficult to keep up with everything that's going on mm. um, and also to to be able to create content to keep up with everything that's going on I know for myself I generally have adopted this approach of waiting until the new release comes out before I even go looking. Um, not because there's there's just too much information, but more because of the the iterative approach at which at which the the block editor is being developed. Oftentimes, um, things will will be almost ready, but. And and the navigation that was removed recently is, is a good example. So it's almost ready, but it's not quite there yet. Feedback was given. And so it's decided to be removed, which I actually prefer because it means that folks are actually getting feedback, yeah. hearing from the community, listening to the community. And they're saying, okay, no, this is not quite ready yet. Let's remove this for the next release so that we can iterate and, and make it better for the following release. Um, so my my habit is to tend to wait until the release is out, wait until the release is stable. And then I start diving in and I start looking for things. Um, and I think that folks, that, that would be one of my pieces of advice for folks is, is try not to keep up with the, the iterative approach of 6.2. Don't have, have an idea of what's coming and what changes to expect. Like for example, 6.2, 6 there's quite a big overall of the user interface and what it looks like and where things are. But sort of stick to the functionality that you do know and let the new functionality come out and be tested a bit more and settle a little bit before you really start diving into it. Uh, because that'll make it a bit easier to kind of pick up. You know, there's something I, I've i always had the opinion, and this is every single piece of software that I've ever worked with or dealt with, is that I, I always wait for that point release. Um, I follow this approach with my with my operating systems. I used to run Ubuntu exclusively before I moved to Automatic, where my first machine had to be a Mac, which is a whole different story. But I always wait for the point release of the new operating system to come out. I I'm never on bleeding edge, uh, you know, latest release version, because there's always some testing time, feedback, iteration in between. Um, so my suggestion would be let 6.2 get released. Let, let it get downloaded by everybody. Let more people give feedback, wait for the point release, and then start diving in. Because uh, that's what I tend to do. <laughs> no, I think that's good. 
Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry, I was just going to welcome show hi to the uh, sure. to the meeting. Do please do enable your visit your your video show hi. We're a very small group today. Uh, so the plan is just have a conversation. Everybody's involved. It's not a panel. It's not a presentation. It's just a conversation. Oh hi. Hey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> no, sorry, I, uh... I am. Uh... Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, <laughs> just in my my cafe. So something loud. Uh, please, uh, patient about it. So where are you joining us from, Shohai? Yeah, I'm making a uh, progress and progress. So uh, just an uh, uh, extension, uh, Ukumas, uh, extension progress. So now uh, just plan uh, blocks uh, with them. Both. So uh, I'm interested in this uh, event. So I joined it. Okay, very, you were very welcome. Where are you joining us from? Uh, Japan. Japan. Yeah. Yeah. What time is so it I there? Quite late. Hi. Hmm? It's quite late what? there, is it? In Japan. Oh, sorry. The time now. Time. What? Ah, what? just right now, uh, five p.m. Oh, five p.m. Oh, that's not so bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shahai, you you may you may have attended some of the sessions that my colleague Ben has has run. Uh, Japanese or uh, Bisan. Um, oh, Japanese Bisan. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you know Ben Ben Evans? Oh, sorry. I, I, my English is a little poor. Sorry. No problem. No, um, no have, problem. Have, have you attended any? So one of my colleagues is Ben Evans. Um, yeah. uh, have you attended any of his his Japanese workshops? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's going to be a no. That's that's. I think is one of the biggest hurdles everybody is nervous about is seeing more and more. Of I, I would like to see a. I know this sounds awful, but it's like a quicker pace with WooCommerce and switching to the blocks because it feels like they're really dragging. I know they're working really hard at it. And there's some, I was reading through the docs and some of the new notes and some of the new, you know, again, like uh, the dev notes that we have for, for WordPress. Um, you know, there's certainly some really nice work that's on the boards to to get done but it's like okay guys can we can we can we move that along and just a tad you know i i get it's more complex in some ways but it's it you know even just um i just feel some, people ask me like are they are they going to like storefront just the standard theme you know it's we've i kind of jumped through hoops and loops with that trying to decide whether to use it and then add the theme JSON and, you know, kind of make it a hybrid versus it's still just a classic theme. And again, it's one of those, I think for me, I run into it all the time is that constant, uh, it's a pain point because you, you, you're, you're trying to assess a project and you're trying to find the right set of tools and components or plugins or extensions in the case of WooCommerce and then it's like, well, everything else is kind of ahead of the game. And now I'm coming back to using storefront. And then it's like, no, I can't use storefront. I've got to use a block theme. And then, you know, it's, um, yeah, that's a hunt and peck mechanism at this point. It's mm -hmm. frustrating because some of the themes are are helpful and some of the themes are not. I mean, they while they, while they may be compatible with, the block editor and um you know in a sense they may be blocks for root for wordpress they're not always um seamless with woocommerce and i think that's that's an area that really needs some tender loving care and some real support mm. i've got to admit i haven't used woocommerce in some time I used it a lot when I was freelancing, did a lot of development and creating custom plugins for WooCommerce. But um, since I stopped being freelance and became employed, I haven't, and that's three years ago now, I actually haven't used WooCommerce at all in that time. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little bit behind the curve when it comes to uh, developments in WooCommerce, I must admit. 
I, I think am, they've done. But go, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I just wanted to say I, I am glad you've raised this though, because I'm similar to to Michael in that I so I haven't actively developed for a number of years now. I I, I purpose, purposely chose a different path, so I haven't worked on on client projects in a number of years. But um, one of one of my and one of Michael and my colleagues at Automatic, uh, a chap you might know his name, a chap by the name of Jeffrey Pierce. Mm -hmm. uh, he used to be he used to be a theme developer lead at WooCommerce. He's now leading the uh, .org, uh, the open source theme team um, inside of Automatic, and they generally work on whatever the next default theme is. And I know I know for a fact that that Jeff so Jeff is a fellow South African who moved to the states recently. I know that they have they have been working. I don't want to say they were working on WooCommerce things, but their sort of focus is how do we what do we prioritize in terms of themes? So I'm going to raise this this uh, this comment with Jeff and let him know. Okay, can we not that... record this at all? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I don't want to I do, hear no, that I, heat coming my I way. Do, <laughs> no, I do think that's no, and I don't mean I'm going to raise it and say Rita asked this, but that's a, that's a very valid point because as you're saying it, I'm seeing Shohei not not nodding. So so he sounds like he's in agreement, and there are probably more developers out there who are working with WooCommerce that are struggling with this pain point. So my thinking is if we can raise this as a concept with Jeff and maybe he's got, maybe there are some plans there that we don't know of, uh, but maybe it's something that that he can look into because his experience working working with, with you know, Woo themes, and he was one of the like um, primary developers on Storefront for a number of years. Um, he took over, there was another theme that, that ran for a number of years that then got, Canvas. I don't remember what it was. I think it was so Canvas. He, Canvas. Yes, Canvas, Canvas, thank you. He worked on Canvas for a number of years before Canvas development was stopped. So he will, I'm sure he will like to hear that that, that is a pain point because I think that he will be able to help make some things happen. Um, so thank you for raising that. I will I will definitely send him a message and, and ping him about this afterwards. And I won't oh, mention no. your name. Don't worry. I won't mention your name. It'll just be the community. <laughs> thank you. Oh boy, okay, this is going to be welcome rough. City Pong to the uh, to the discussion. Do feel free to to enable your video and microphone, City Pong, because uh, there's very few of us, and it's this is just a conversation. We're not doing this as a panel or a presentation, so do feel free to join in. While while City Pong is joining, um, uh, Shohei, did, did you have any specific questions or comments that you wanted to to share today? Any pain points that you're struggling with, or were you just interested to hear what was going on? <laughs> oh. That's right now. Um, I developed now blocks, and so this one, one month or two months. So, and uh, payment and uh, checkout and the uh, cart blocks is very complex. <laughs> Some blocks and inside in uh, so, nest blocks, nest nest. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and so uh, I cannot understand, but I, um, still you now uh, other folk. Uh, in the block, block the uh, hook, uh, H O O K, uh, blocks, block hook. So it's a difficult to me uh, mm. how to use the uh, block uh, hook. So, uh, so how to use hooks that. with blocks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. PHP, uh, PHP hook hooks hook with is blocks. very, uh, I, I, I understand, but mm. uh, blocks of hook is a bit, bit difficult. And right. so, uh, language uh, uh, translates uh, to Japanese, and um, is uh, some uh, wrong, and uh, it's um, uh, I can't uh, find the uh, uh, code uh, in a code or something. It is difficult. For me. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so what? I, what? Let me just confirm that I'm hearing that you're struggling to figure out. So you're used to using hooks, and you're used to being able to to create callbacks for hooks so that you can modify things or change things or work with those those data now you're moving to blocks and obviously you don't have access to those hooks so when things are happening in blocks you want to be able to work with those hooks um, and you're and you're finding that the the translated content in japanese mm -hmm. to teach you that information is just not there and and and, and struggling to find information am i understanding you correctly yeah yeah okay um i'm gonna I'm going to um, just reply to that because I'm the one who said you have any questions that I don't have an answer for you. 
Um, but thank you for raising it because now I can dive in. Michael, I don't know if you have any any suggestions or answers around there. I've I've never tried to work with blocks and hooks, um, but I'm taking lots of notes. And as Rita knows, mm. I, I create content for Learn WordPress. Um, and Ben is one of my colleagues and he speaks Japanese. So we can definitely have a look at what we can do there, but mm. I don't have any direct answers. Um, so you're talking about using PHP hooks with... Yeah, with blocks. Not the React so, hooks. No. Yeah. But maybe that's one of the issues that needs to be addressed in the sense of how to, I, I, I think that is, it took me, and I'm by no means the wizard, but it took me a good year to really wrap my head around how blocks are being created and how to create a block and how to customize a block and how to nest a block. And that's apart from anything that would be the admin side as a you know content creator or then developing. And I think that's one thing that would be very helpful is to um, I've I've played on learn uh, I've played I've done a couple of those and we might want to point those out in a sense of just to help know how to kind of just go through the steps, but thinking about blocks and what you're used to doing prior with templates is not hmm. and it's not a seamless transition hmm. and hmm. i think that that's where people get very confused because they know they have this they've already started thinking the project they know what they want to do they're used to doing that with templates but then what happens it's okay now how do i make that how do i do that in in blocks and i think there's a bit of a disconnect there on how to approach hmm. And that might be one of those things that um, I don't know. I am just thinking while we were talking, did I know of any resources that I could point to? And, you know, again, everything is mostly in English. So I, I apologize for that. I yeah. don't speak Japanese. <laughs> I, I speak good Chinese that's usually taxi or nasty words, but that's <laughs> about it. <laughs> so. Yeah. The, yes. as, you know, as you, as you observed, you know, all the documentation, is in English, and um, there is a polyglot team within the WordPress community whose um, remit is to translate mm -hmm. uh, documentation and other resources into other languages. Um, and they do a pretty good job of translating user documentation. Um, I'm not really aware of any kind of uh, concerted effort to translate developer documentation at the moment so i think it's you know that's possibly something the way the, you know that could be addressed you know working on developer documentation in other languages you know mm -hmm. for, because it it kind of does make documentation inaccessible to people who's um mm -hmm. you know who don't have any english or, or even code, english is poor. Code, code examples i mm -hmm. think is the the kind of common language Mm. over the 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 actual language of the country so if the code could be i'm just i'm trying to think this through a bit you know in a way that would be helpful um i don't have i have resources but again it's all it's all basically um it's all here in the states yeah so yeah you know, co coding languages themselves are essentially Based, right. on, based on English, you know, all the keywords, you know, like for, you know, while and uh, mm -hmm. let, you know, and all that. So I think anybody doing any kind of programming has to have at least a modicum of English just to understand mm -hmm. the programming language and the structure of the language. Um, but, it, you know, so, but I don't think we can assume just because they need some basic English to understand mm a language you know whether it's javascript whether it's you know c plus plus or whatever um that they understand enough uh enough english <clears throat> you know to follow more discursive documentation or blog blog posts or tutorials and so on so you know perhaps more effort is needed there to uh mm -hmm. To translate that's... it into other language, but what you know, what is there about four thousand languages on the planet? <laughs> so that's uh, an that... overwhelming uh, when... task. Men men mentioning Ben again, I know Ben has been doing quite a lot of work within Learn WordPress to try and get things translated. Um, I think 
I think that what also will help, and this this gets back to um, Michael, what you were saying is, unfortunately, and and this is even something ironically, I speak English first first language, but even I struggle with certain programming terms because I speak uh, the Queen's English. So whenever I have to type the word color, um, a part of me a part of me dies inside when I have to leave out the U. That's just a personal thing. But as, as, as being British, I really, exactly, I really exactly. have that. Uh, but you that appreciate said, that even more. <laughs> yeah, that having been said, I've gotten used to it because yeah, that's the language I'm programming yeah. in every day. So I do agree that more, and this goes back to what Rita was saying, more examples of how to do these things. So if if we that are part of the developer relations team, the learn WordPress team, the documentation team, if we can make sure that our examples that exist, like in, in, in Shoei's example, how do how do how do I do, you know, hooks in a block environment? Um, my, so my first question would be, and maybe we can discuss this today, and maybe we can discuss this offline sometime. But I I start I start going to educator mode. That that's mm-hmm. my job. So I start going well. What is the core problem? What are you trying to do? Uh, because there's many ways that you might want to use hooks in a block. Um, you might want to do things while the block is being rendered in the editor, which may or may not be possible. Or you might just be wanting to use those hooks when your block content is being rendered on the front end, which is then using dynamic blocks or the dynamic option, the dynamic rendering option. Um, so this is this is the part where I... I my my job as a developer educator is to is to find out what people are struggling with and then try and create the content for that. Um, so I would almost go as far as to say that we almost need to be, and this is a discussion we've had before um, in the training team. Uh, we're, we've been we've been thinking about um, creating some kind of forum, some kind of communicative platform where folks like. Shohei or Rita or whoever that have specific questions about how do I do X? How do I use X with Y? Can can come and ask those questions and then other contributors can respond with their solutions. And the support forums is not the best place for that because it's not support. Um, and, And the make WordPress Slack is not the best place for that because it's not developing WordPress. So there is there is a definite need, a definite um Gap for a learning community um, where, where when you're getting stuck with something, you can come in and say, hey, folks, I am busy with this. I'm busy developing this payment plugin integration block, whatever. I want to be able to do this. How do I go about doing it? Um, so I, I'm going to I'm, I'm making lots of notes today. Um, and I'm going to make another note of this one and see if I can raise this conversation again, because it's something we have discussed. Um, the blockers were what do we use? You know, one part of the community is saying we should use something like BB Press, open source, WordPress based, et cetera, et cetera. And then another part of the community says, well, if we do that, then we have to set up a new WordPress install and it needs hosting. And what if we use, you know, one of these, these platforms like Discord or Discourse or one of those things, you know, a, a software as a service base? And then you have the first part of the community saying, yes, but we don't control that. Um, so it's always interesting in trying to manage those things. But it, it's starting to, as I'm sitting here listening to these conversations, it's it's sounding more and more like we need to have these places because then Shuri could, for example, ask his question and then maybe another Japanese contributor who exactly. has the answer could reply with some examples and then maybe they could go, there could be a Japanese group and they could discuss it there and make it so yes. much easier for him. And you could have these different places where in- interaction is happening and anybody can just join. So, so I don't have answers today, but I have, I, I will make a promise that I'm going to, I'm going to open this conversation up again and see what we can kick off this year. Cause it sounds like it's, it's, there's a definite need for it. I think Good. one of the discourse communities that I'm part of, I was just trying to think which one it was. They actually have that and they have mm. uh, channels broken out by language and then they help with translation on Mm. like there may be one or two people who are um i'm going to use the word monitors but that's not necessarily the right word but they're kind of the ambassadors for that channel 
So anybody who is uh, like in a case of a Japanese uh, request, they would be the they would be the first line that would meet or see that there was somebody who was struggling and needed some translation and then help from that point on in a sense of providing the resources or direction of what would be available. Okay. I'm just pointed at putting a link in the chat to the WordPress Stack Exchange, which is kind of similar to, uh, mm. I know it's not a platform that, that, that WordPress.org controls, but it is a resource mm -hmm. similar to what uh, Jonathan was talking about, largely for developers to ask questions and so on. I'm not sure to what extent it's multilingual, um, but anyway, the link is there. Let's see here. Yeah, and the, the other, code yeah, examples. I'm going to put ahead. another link for you because we were talking earlier about having code examples is everyone aware about of the gutenberg examples repo so just adding a yes. link to that as well which is a good resource for just look you know if to see how things are built of course you know gutenberg itself go to the gutenberg repo and see how the core blocks are, are built but the gutenberg examples you know gives you some other uh examples of uh of blocks that you can go and look and see how they're built and of course, crib the code for your own projects. Jonathan, did you see, um, I know I saw it on uh, Twitter where you had kind of reached out or were congratulating some of the CloudFest hackathon. Mm. Did you see the dang it? Um, it docks, uh, docks dang it. Yeah, that was kind of fun. And I, I it, you know, that could actually, that could actually be very useful uh, and it could be something to have that kind of conversation with uh, Melania, if I'm saying that correct. Melana. 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 Yeah. yeah. So that might be, you know, in a sense of just um, having that being able to translate in the browser mm -hmm. in a way that not necessarily, you know, quickly, it like it gives you a, a, a jumping off at least to be able to then. I don't know with the code examples because they seem some of those seem to be static in the sense of just just that. But um, you know, but the, I'm glad, there's, I'm glad you raised this because some another this is these are all ideas that I've been having. But another idea that I had was how could we take our code examples that we have on Learn WordPress because a lot of the code examples that I specifically create are not examples of code you will find in the documentation. I try and use. I try and get feedback from folks um, about their specific problems that they're having and then try and find an example. Like, for example, Shohei, I, I, I'm going to dive into, I would like to connect with you afterwards maybe and find out what you're struggling with, with how to use hooks and sort of example use cases and then see if we can create some kind of example code around how to do that. Um, and I would love to have all of that content somehow um, in a public repository somewhere that is more easily searchable. And I would love to be able to add it to Doc Stangit, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, it, it de definitely having those kind of projects where you can search across the whole of the WordPress ecosystem, not just the documentation, not just, you know, the dev notes, but the whole system is, is, is yeah, very- there's, there's a project happening in that regard to create an AI chat interface that will you know, you'll ask your question in, you know, very similar to chat GPT. And I think it actually uses the chat GPT engine, the thing that's being developed. Um, or, or chat AI, something, yeah, I'm not sure what it, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about the inter internal implementations because I'm not directly involved. But um, it will, you know, present a, an interface where you ask a question in natural language and it will then search across the, the developer documentation, I guess the user documentation, um, and then things like the learn platform and other resources to try and find the answer, you know, so it's got a a broader base of uh, of content to pull from in order to answer questions, you know, using an AI engine. That'd be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a prototype already. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I can find it straight away um but there is a prototype already but it's you know, it's in the the project in its early stages 
So is it a site that you go to or would that be something you would install? In no, it'll just be a site, you, a site you go to, just like using chat GPT. You visit, visit the site. Um, let me see if I can find, let me see if I can find while the- you, um, While you're doing that, um, I just want to recognize Sitapong and Dinesh that they jo Sitapong joined earlier, Dinesh joined recently. We're chatting about um, something that, that Shohei mentioned about integrating blocks with PHP hooks and all that kind of thing. Um, Shohei, just one last question around that, because I'm sort of trying to think of, I, I, I don't have answers for you. And I hate the fact that I don't have something to give you to go away to maybe read or, or see if you can solve the problem. But can you think of a, an example of where you were struggling to think about? So is there a, let me, let me rephrase that. Is there a specific problem that you're dealing with? Or were you just wondering how blocks would work with hooks? Uh, maybe give give some more feedback there and we can see maybe we can come up with something that I can give you to, to go and read or learn or dis or discover. Oh just mm, <laughs> it's difficult to <laughs> so um perhaps uh perhaps uh Ukumas is a very confident uh blocks uh price blocks and hydro blocks so uh many uh blocks so uh, uh make an inbox to uh, so um it's a um, I can make a simple uh block so for example uh, uh WordPress uh uh to WP create uh like a simple codes. So mm -hmm. but uh, some uh I want to know the step by step uh example I want to if uh exists now. Uh, mm. documentation uh mm. it's uh, helpful for me mm. so what you yeah. so what i'm hearing is you you can make simple blocks but you're struggling with more complicated blocks that yeah, yeah, have yeah, more yeah, functionality yeah, yeah. okay okay yeah. um so i will i will say two things um number one yes the the simple block examples and documentation is is fairly straightforward and easy to figure out um the how do I do the more ex more complicated stuff? Um, it, yeah, it's not there yet. Um, I do know that that for example, the the work that Michael and I do, um, and I'll speak for myself personally. I am right now. I'm focusing on how do I create that simple content because that content doesn't even exist. Um, once I have cleared the simple examples of how things work, then I can start looking at the more advanced things. Um, so unfortunately, at this point in time, it is going to be a situation where you are kind of on your own. Uh, you're going to need to to play with things, figure things out. Um, I, I think that, so here, here is a piece of advice that I will give anybody building blocks or wanting to build blocks. Uh, and this ties back to what you were saying about, you know, PHP hooks and WordPress blocks and that kind of thing. Um, because, because blocks are JavaScript, uh, which means they need to render in the browser. Um, yeah. And this, this ties back to what Rita was saying. One almost needs to try not to think about them in terms of how things used to work. Um, and my my suggestion would be to to focus on so there's a concept um, there's a concept in in block development where you can um, you can have a, a dynamic block. So what that means is your block. Um, I'm trying to find here we go. Here's the documentation. I'm going to share this with you. Um, I don't know if there's a if there's a translated version of this. I apologize. Well, it might work in the in the in the browser. It might it work may... in the browser. Yeah. Yeah, the browser might might automatically find that you know the translated version, um, but a dynamic block is essentially where the the block only works in the editor, and then the the rendering on the front end is all PHP. So you register a callback, and then everything happens there. Um, and there is a there is a block that I developed when I first started developing blocks. One of the first blocks that I developed was using this dynamic feature. So. The block only exists as a block in the editor, and it's and it's literally just displaying what it looks like, um, and then all the rendering happens on the PHP side. And that 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 for me was just an easier way to build advanced functionality 
using PHP, using hooks, using everything that I already know and I'm comfortable with. Um, and I kept the blocks very simple. Um, and doing that helped me get used to the block paradigm and how blocks work without focusing too much on the on the on the in-depth functionality. And I could just stick with PHP and my usual uh, uh, query objects and my hooks and all those kind of things for the front end. Um, so that would be, if, if you haven't discovered dynamic blocks, I would recommend reading into that and how that works. Um, and then, and then get used to keep, keep building, keep building those simple blocks for yourself, um, so that you learn the paradigms. Um, and then the, the last piece of advice I would have, and, and Michael, I hope you don't mind, I'm going to speak a little bit on your behalf here, but reach out to folks like myself and Michael who are hosting these sessions. If you get stuck with things, um, Absolutely. and say, yeah, and, and, and this is something I say in all my learn WordPress workshops, um, one of the biggest areas that I learned when I was developing blocks was there was a there was a contributor I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want everybody to bombard him um, but there was a contributor contributor that I got to know um, I think it was at a word camp and when I started developing blocks I just kept sending him private messages in the making WordPress Slack and I said hey how do I do this how do I do that and so I want to take his his kindness he, he answered all my questions and and he's also he's a he's a core contributor on on Gutenberg mm -hmm. and he took the time out to answer my questions so I want to pay that forward and say that if you're stuck with something if you want to figure something out feel free to reach out to me um reach out to Michael um, absolutely if we if we don't know the answers we'll put you in touch with the folks who can find the answers yeah. if you're if you're struggling with with translating your Japanese thoughts into English reach out to Ben and and get him to reach out to me. Ben and I work together, so he'll be able to to converse with you in Japanese. We've actually had that. We had a uh, uh, somebody who joined one of his meetups, who had a specific question. Ben pinged me. He and I went back and forth, and then Ben was able to reply with some information. It was about using short int or something. I can't remember. Um, but those of us, I would I would again speak on other people's behalf. But I'm going to mention for myself. I I am privileged that I am sponsored to work on the WordPress project full-time. So use me, reach out, ask me questions. If you're stuck with something, I'll either find out, I'll either have the answer or I'll be able to find it out for you. Um, and then let's help, let's help you figure out these things. And then maybe once you've figured it out, we can convince you to write the documentation in Japanese yeah. for the rest of your community. Um, yes. So, so use yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. The thing, the thing about WordPress is, it, is it, it's a community, we're a community, no, you know, none of us need to be working alone. And it's something that took me a while to learn. You know, I was kind of struggling in the beginning, figuring, figuring stuff out, using documentation, Googling stuff. And then, you know, um, I guess it takes took me a while. And then, you know, just, just to realize how friendly and open the community is. You can just ask a question, you know, in the WordPress Slack, just talk to somebody at a WordCamp, um, you know, so somebody who once met at a meetup. Um, there's a couple of people that I help on a regular basis. You know, one of them is local and he's always phoning me up, uh, you know, because he's stuck on something. Um, and the great thing about the WordPress community is everyone's so willing to help. You know, so use exactly. use the community as a resource, you know. Um, but then, and, you know, a community is always a two-way thing, you know, give back to the community as well, you know, contribute something, contribute code, contribute documentation, uh, you know, in whatever way you can contribute, even if it's, um, you know, there is, you know, if you go to make.wordpress.org, there are all the teams are listed there. There's so many ways to contribute, um, you know, you can contribute as a community member, organizing word camps and meetups, contribute to documentation, contribute to code to core, reviewing plugins and themes for the repository so yeah you know so it's a community you know everyone's everyone's involved everyone's willing to help and the biggest thing is that you're willing to learn you know that the, mm. the you have to just i think i i have it what i have experienced is where people are stuck in a this is what they've always done and that's the only way they're going to do it and you can't you can't like there's no conversation that you can have 
that gets them to that space. And I think sometimes that has to be, that has to come from you. So if, as long as you're willing to be vulnerable, not be good at English, but still try until we can get better at Japanese and then we can start building these bridges because I would love, I would love to learn Japanese. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but I, you know, that's, that's the thing is right there. You meet people who just are the same mindset that are like, let's do this. We've just got to figure out, even if it's through sign language and whiteboards, we'll get there. And I think that's, that's the thing is just keep, keep, an open mind and keep learning just keep asking mm. but one of the other teams in uh in make wordpress is the polyglots team mm -hmm. so that's another area that people can get involved you know especially if you're um a speaker of a language other than english in helping to translate um you know so in the case of um of yourself shohai taking the documentation or other resources you know learn resources that jonathan develops and um, translate them to you know to your language for people in your uh, country. Community, yeah, yeah, our community, yeah. Um, is it so? That's a whole other way that people can contribute if they're speakers of of um of other languages as in English is translating the English resources. And admittedly, they are primarily de developed in English. Uh, you know, for better or worse, English is the de facto language of the web and uh, the computer industry. Um, and and translate those, you know, to your language. That's a great way, you know, for for people to make a contribution that's really going to have an impact. Uh, because uh, well, you would, know, you may speak would... English and Japanese, uh, but there might be people who speak Japanese but don't speak English and would really value a translation of a one of Jonathan's courses or some of the documentation into Japanese. I would mention that we are preaching a little bit to the choir here because I noticed yeah. that Shohei is already a translation <laughs> editor oh, and a workshop organizer. So okay. <laughs> he's already on board. <laughs> okay, I hadn't checked out Shohei's <laughs> profile. That's the beauty of the profile system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, apologies. And and thank you for your contribution, <laughs> for, for contributing <laughs> in that way. It's extremely valuable. Let me uh, yes. just encourage once again Dinesh and Sitipong to uh, to unmute and bring their cameras up. We're a very small group here. When it's a conversation, we're not a panel. When it's not a presentation, so please join in the conversation. Or let us know if you have any questions. If you're feeling a little shy, post your questions in the chat, and we can answer there. Oh. Because I joined this meeting later when I driving. So, oh. so sorry that I cannot lay it, make any noise. Yeah. No, please concentrate on your driving. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, don't worry, just listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the other the other piece of advice that I would give to folks who are who are building blocks, um, and this was something that I did when I was learning to build blocks, is try and find um, plugins that exist that have the functionality that you're already, that maybe you want to learn or is close to what you want to learn. Um, to the best of my knowledge, and I, I'm not I'm not 100% sure of this, so I'm not going to say it as fact, but to the best of my knowledge, the majority, at least, of the WooCommerce extensions that are available um, on WooCommerce.com should, should be open source. So you should be able to, if you purchase it, inspect the code and then extend it from there. Um, many of them might already have public repositories that you can go and dig into. Um, that's how I learned to. So, so there's a there's a developer um, blog post that I posted um, about converting short codes to blocks. Um, while I'm talking, I'm going to go see if I can find it. But um, when I when I was first building, you know, this advanced custom functionality that we're talking about, um, I was building something that needed to uh, connect to the WordPress REST API for a custom post type, um, and it needed to get some data and do a few other things, um, and it needed to update certain things. 
So it was sort of more advanced than what I was used to. And there was a there was another plugin out there that actually did that for me. Well, not did it for me. It did a similar thing um, with slightly different functionality. So I just got hold of that plugin and I just installed it on my site. And I just literally went through and pulled and pushed and broke and took some example code and refactored it for my own purposes. Um, so that's another great way to learn how to do more advanced functionality when you're building blocks is, is find other plugins. Ideally, they're on the, on the .org repository uh, or it's plugins that you're able to purchase or get copies of and inspect what they're doing and, and also reach out to those developers, those plugin mm. developers. Mm. Um, yeah, if that's you, the joy of open source. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And then ask them and say, how did you implement this specific problem that I'm also struggling with? Um, and then another way, an, a third option, is to hire a developer uh, and get them to build what you need, and then and then and then learn from that process. I've had customers when I was still freelancing. I had one customer who hired me to build something for them, and then they wanted me to step through with them how it worked and explain to them. So it was kind of like a teaching. So I actually at the time was was prepared to. Um, sort of because there was something that I had to learn to develop it for them. So I gave them a slight discount and I said, well, because I have to go and learn this thing, I am increasing my knowledge. So I will give you a discount and then we'll sort of learn together. So that's even a third option. Um, because yes, it is it is very difficult to learn the brand new technology when when it hasn't fully been documented. I respect that. Um, and and so those are the, those are the things that I did, um, you know, looking at other plugins that are doing similar things, being able to reach out to specific people. Um, those are the, the areas that I was able to. And with you, I don't know if you've, if you've seen the, the WordPress developer blog. Um, I, I, yeah, it's I'll just find been a link. Once... It's been in beta for a while. It's just been officially launched last week. That's right. Yeah. I would, like... I would even, I yeah. would even say those people writing those blog posts, you'll see a, you'll see a few names there that you might recognize. Those are also good people to reach out to. There's Ryan Welcher, yeah. there's there's Rich Table, there's um Michael, what's your other teammate's name? Um uh, Justin, Justin, Justin Tadlock. Tadlock. Yeah. Reach out to those folks and say, I'm mm -hmm. struggling with something. Yeah. How would you've, you you've got a, this? You've got a couple of posts? I've, I've got a yeah, I've got a post there. So, yeah. so those of us who are writing on the core dev blog, we're already in that mindset of wanting to help folks. So, so pick somebody there and say, hey, this is what I'm struggling with. How can you help mm. me? Um, yeah. Yeah. And of course, the conversation can happen there on the developer blog as well in the comments mm. threads on each post. But yeah, as Jonathan says, you can always reach out to people in DMs. Doing things pub you, because of the, you know, WordPress is open source, WordPress is a community. It's always better to do things in uh, in the public sphere, you know, in on the making WordPress Slack or wherever. But sometimes, you know, I get it, you know, you, um, and I, I suffer from this myself. You don't necessarily always want to expose your ignorance. So reaching out in a DM to somebody is is also fine. I, I still do that. I sometimes reach out in a DM because I just don't want to like put in a public space that I don't know this. <laughs> and also the advantage of a DM, especially if you, if you if English is not your first language, is you can go and use like a translation service, translate it to English, send it yeah. to the person and then they <laughs> take their time. So that's the other advantage. <laughs> yeah. There's, I think that's uh, all of those things that I was just listening to. I'm, I've been thinking about this for language because Jonathan had made a comment in Twitter one time and they were talking about, he was complaining about, he, he brought up the word color. And I had replied in a sense that one of the things I find is because I came to WordPress and coding outside of what, uh, you know, I was in design and marketing and all of that. And I was frustrated with the fact that I couldn't build what I wanted or what I could design, I wanted to now build. So I came from that. And the, the, the thing that I learned from all of this is that there are, there are words, we use words that have a certain commonality to them, but have very different meaning in, in certain environments. And code is one of those places where you might, you know, I love reading the comments that developers put in 
their code. I, I'm one of those kind of geeky people that read the code. And, you know, I before I ever touch anything, I read the code and then I read the comments because I always find some nugget that is <laughs> it's it's worth it's it, it's worth its weight in gold because mm. I'm not hunting for things that I, you know, like, why is that not working? And, you know, and, you know, you just keep going through it. And I think that, um, yeah, there are some words that we use uh, that really do trip you up because how you how what how you use it in colloquial language and then how you use it in technology may not be the same. Mm. And it can be all in the same language. I mean, and then I'm sure it's even harder when you're having to translate it. Mm. So if Gutenberg had existed when you started to learn to code, you're coming from a design background. So if Gutenberg existed and you could translate your design straight into, uh, you know, using a visual editor like Gutenberg Mm -hmm. without having to learn to code, would you have ever learned to code, do you think? I think I would just because mm. I, I I have I'm um I like that part of I, I just found like it came easy in the way of my interest is just always consuming and it's always going more and more towards the code. I think mm. the editor is is going to be one of those like I play with Figma still and I do some things with that and I watch like I think I think we all come from that where we're used to dealing with clients and we're having to we're, we're assessing their, um, their abilities to, you know, like, are, do they get what we designed? You know, are, is it, is it's that UX that how fluid is that interaction? And then, um, yeah, I think, I think we, I think today people that I come in contact with her picking up WordPress for the first time, I'm just like, this is going to be a joy because I'm picking up, I have a better sense of the person who who wants to get in under the hood and understand how and why things are connected versus the person who just wants to build a page or a website because they need to get it out. And it's it's got a very specific, um, you know, objective that they, they have to meet. And they're not really interested, they don't care. Like, and, and that may sound, un, um, um, it doesn't sound nice to say, but it's a fact. They're, they've got a hundred other things on their list for work or whatever it is that they're doing. So they're not really worried about, they just want it to work. And they want it to work now, not in five minutes and not with an explanation. They want it to work now. And um, then they're happy. Then it's like, this is the best thing. And when I've heard complaints, it's like, well, I can do this with Wix. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but you can also do that with with WordPress. There, there are things I use the I use the example of a home, and I'm like, you can enter your house, a physical space, by multiple places. So you can crawl through a window, or you can walk through a door. That's entirely up to you. Now you might have several doors. The question is, what becomes the front door? You make that choice. You design that choice. And I think that, um, yeah, it just, I think WordPress is, is still a little bit in transition, but I think I'm, I'm totally on board with Gutenberg and I'm totally on board with going the block uh, way, but I also understand where it's hard for some people, especially if they've built a career around this, they've been doing it for a while. It's the change is, is not, it, the change is, is uncomfortable. Yeah. There's a lot of nervousness. Yeah, abso- absolutely. That, that was part of the reasoning behind holding these sessions was to help. Mm-hmm. And admittedly, we haven't really touched on the subject that this was meant to be about <laughs> migrating a plugin to blocks. But it's still been an interesting conversation. But the point of these sessions was to do this kind of outreach, to, to give people this the, this opportunity to talk about mm-hmm. the struggles they're having in making this transition from the PHP world to the javascript react uh, gutenberg block based world and we will be holding more of these we're coming up to the hour so um uh, if you'll permit me i'll just do a little bit of wrapping up yes um i just um 
my notes say to talk about word camps. There are some word camps coming up. There's not there's not too many of us. There's some some in some in Europe. There's a couple in Asia. Um, I see we've got a, there's one in um, Sailhet, Bangladesh, and I, Ilolio in the Philippines. Um, some in Africa. But I don't think we've got anybody joining us from Africa today. Um, you can visit central.wordcamp.org for a full list of upcoming word camps. Of course, there's the flagship events. Word Camp Europe is happening in uh, in Athens in June, and then there's um, Word Camp uh, US earlier this year. It's happening in August. I think it's normally in October. I'm not sure where is. I'm not sure where Word Camp US is happening. Oh, it's somewhere in Washington, near Washington DC. I think it is this year. I um, I thought it was West Coast. I may be wrong. Let me see. It was San Diego last year. I, I thought it was. That's right. So it could be DC. Yeah, I think it's somewhere near DC this year. But yeah, I'll say central.wordcamp.org is a uh, is your go to place to find out about uh, upcoming word camps. Um, Maryland. Maryland. That's near DC. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So show show hi. Has you got any word camps planned for Japan since the? Have you had any since the pandemic finished or? Yeah, yeah, but and uh, this year is in uh, October. Uh, yeah, in October. October. Yeah. yeah, Awesome. Um, Are you going to do a presentation on blocks and converting <laughs> from classic to Gutenberg? Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm right there with you. So we'll, we'll do this together. <laughs> okay. What, one of the other things happening uh, starting this week is um, myself and my colleague have been working on some documentation issues in the Gutenberg repository. Trying, you know, there's a, about, actually, I can't remember how many. There's quite a lot of open documentation issues which uh, relate to the handbook. We are, we've been doing this sort of um, internally, but we're opening this up to the community. This Thursday, we're gonna be starting block editor handbook scrub sessions to sort of clear up the issue. So if you want to help out with uh, updating the hand, the block editor handbook, please join us. I think that's gonna be one, oh, I'm not sure the, uh... we just changed the clocks here in the UK. And it's just thrown everything out for me. It's going to either be 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. UTC on Thursday. Um, but there, there will be an announcement. There's going to be an announcement post in Make, and we'll announce it in the Making Word, in the Core Editor channel in Making WordPress. So that'll be kicking off this Thursday, and we'll be doing those weekly for the foreseeable future until we've cleared all the issues. So they could be oh, running cool. for a while. Um, I think that's a, anybody else got anything else? Any other announcements, community based, or anything upcoming? May twenty twenty seventh is the celebration, twenty year celebration. Of course, yes. I'm not sure if there's a central resource anywhere to find out what's going on. Do you news? Know? Look, you can go to. I think it's WordPress. It, I found under wordpress.org news, there should be something there. I just, and you can download some logos and stuff. They're, they're starting to, oh, I want to say it's, it maybe even WP Tavern said, put some stuff in on their last, or this week's, this past weekend, their, their, their post that they send out. Uh, let me see here. So it's going to be WordPress. I'll, I'll put it in the um, in the chat. Sure. Yeah, good call. I left that out of my notes. I didn't. Uh, not something that uh, that occurred to me. Um, so yeah, well, of I think course, it, the twentieth yeah, anniversary of WordPress. There will be stuff happening. I think it's just we're all kind. Of, I mean, we're catching up on it because they had put it on hold for a while. They were waiting mm. and they have some swag. So on the homepage, they tell you, but it's not linking. Um, where is this? Oh, there we go. So you can go to the, ah, got it. Okay. 
So where are you guys? There you go. I'll put it in Slack. You can all see. Amazing. There you go. Um. Yeah, so we're going to come up to the end. So let me just remind you that we've got quite a few useful links in the chat. So this is a good opportunity to save the chat. If um, I could, below the chat, I you've got... Sorry. If I could make a suggestion there, um, maybe we could, Michael, maybe after this, you can grab those links and post them in the comments of the meetup. Um, sure. Ex excellent. I'll, I'll save the chat myself. Then it's there for myself. everybody who was here and anybody who couldn't make it or yeah. watching the recording later. Yeah, yeah, but Michael, you're going to have to do some scrubbing. I mean, I, I, honestly, <laughs> right now, do not do not put me in the middle of this. <laughs> well, we'll sort it out. Don't worry. We'll sort it out. <laughs> Jonathan, let me tell you something. If you don't, there's going to be payback. And I, I know there is. I know. Don't worry. We'll sort it out. We'll sort it out. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Guys, I'm not sure I've you. got the video editing capabilities to go bleeping <laughs> things that's out. Where I, that's where I come in. That's where I come in. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Um, well, listen, Michael, I'll try and definitely uh, jump jump in on Thursday. I'll do my best. And if nothing do. else, if if not this week, then definitely the following week. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, there'll there. be an announcement post on that. Um, yeah. So it remains to thank everyone for attending, to thank Jonathan for co-hosting. And let me just mention that Jonathan has just released a new course. Was it on Friday you launched it? On Friday, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, on uh, on the very topic that we were meant to discuss, and which we largely deviated from, on on um, migrating a, sh a, a short code into okay. a block. Um, so everything we didn't talk about today is in Jonathan's new course. Um, let me let me put a link to that as well in the chat. Um, that's in the learn. That's on the that, learn platform, yeah. so you can go and look at that. And now that I've added something else, I'll need to like save the chat again. You know, the, thinking about that, just let me say this, Shoshan. It, you could look at there's a course there that Jonathan, you did maybe you did it. I don't know. I forget now, but I had it's the data actually how the data is passed through a, mm. a block. That was uh, Adam, I think, who did that one. And it, it's it's actually helpful because that really had no documentation and you have to actually do this. So it might help you start to think this through a little different. Yeah, let me put a link to that for you. Bear with me just a second. Um... With dynamic blocks and static blocks, that uh, uh, beginner, that beginner. Um, yeah, it's called using article. the WordPress data layer. Yes, and that was very yeah. helpful. Let me post a link to that for you. And and Michael, there while you you're there, maybe maybe also post the link to your course because there's some interesting topics in your yeah, course. Yeah, my course well, is more so beginner would... focused for people just starting out with block mm. development. Okay. And then again, like if you have if you have ideas for courses like, you know, advanced topics, send them our way because then we can create them. Um, I was going to say I, we'll get you to write them. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> I don't I don't know what people don't know until they send me yeah. and say this is what I don't know. How would I do this? And then I can either yeah. create a workshop on it if it's a small topic, or if it's a big topic, I can do a course. Um, so please send me your ideas. Yeah, we're um, sponsored contributors. We will work full time on this. Yeah, so, so, you know, anything that you think is missing. And this is one of the prime reasons for holding these sessions to find out what you guys in the community need. You know, what can we do to help you? You know, what resources do you want? What courses? What training? Uh, what's missing in the documentation? Mm -hmm. So reach out to us either publicly in making WordPress or privately in a DM. Uh, we're happy either way. And let us know what you want. You know, we work full time on this. We we um, we have the time and resources to uh, to develop these things. You may not get well, it instantly, certainly... but you'll get it. <laughs> but no, I will definitely reach out and say hi, even when I'm stuck just oh, to, no, please I do. mean, there are moments when it's just like, okay, guys, I'm losing my mind. Somebody tell me I'm not nuts. <laughs> 
Anyway, thank yeah. you both. And uh, this was fun. I'll have to do this another time. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we will schedule, as I said, we'll, this is the last in the initial run of these, but we will be scheduling some more very soon. So keep a lookout in the same place on meetup.com um, in the, uh, um, what's it called? The a meetup. Uh, yeah, it's well, meetup, but the Learn Word, WordPress well, online workshops uh, yeah. channel, whatever, yeah. in, in meetup. And we'll be posting the next run of these there. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Jonathan, for co-hosting. Thank you. Um, thank you. And yeah, maybe see you in in the developer and the documentation uh, scrub thing on Thursday or a future so you'll one see of me these. And... One way or the other, I'm always somewhere in there, either Slack or, <laughs> or looking at reading documentation. Yeah. So I'm okay. your reader. All right, right guys. <laughs> Look forward to Be catching safe. up with you then. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you.